Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and this is Apogee Components uh, DVD on building the Saturn kits. Um, I wanted to make this little introduction to tell you what is different on this DVD than it was in the past. When we created these kits back in the uh, early 2000s, like 2001 and 2002, um, I created, I made all the videos that you're about to see using a simple um, mini DV camcorder like this one here. Um, and it uses um, these little little uh, tapes. And um, well, over the years, technology has gotten a lot better, and the tapes have been replaced with new camcorders that store everything on these little SD cards. This can store uh, two hours of tape. Well, I saved all my tapes from the original um, production of the kit, but over time, the tapes have kind of degraded a little bit. Um, some of the tapes, uh, when you run them through the camcorder, they, uh, they kind of crinkle, and that kind of degrades the quality of the video. Uh, for this DVD, I went back to the original tapes because I didn't have time to uh, redo all the videos because there's uh, several hours worth of work in each one. Um, and to create each like two-minute segment takes approximately two to three hours. So I just didn't have the time, and I'm sorry for that. Um, so I went back to the original um, tapes and used them to create this DVD. But there were instances where some of the uh, video was missing. So what I had to do was to take the original CD-ROMs and grab those images out of the CD-ROM and splice them onto the uh, tapes in the missing parts. And fortunately, they're very short, maybe uh, two to three seconds at most. It's usually at the beginning of each segment. Um, so I had to take um, a little image that was 320 by 240 pixels and blow it up into a larger DVD format. So the quality on the, in, in certain spots on this DVD is going to be a little bit lower than I had uh, hoped for. But I just wanted to make this uh, introduction so that you understand why that is. Um, so let's go ahead and start some building some rockets here. For the internal components of the first stage on the Saturn V, we're going to need the following items from the box. The motor mount tube, which is the long tube, two rings, the brown engine block, Kevlar shock cord, and two of the die cut sheets. One of them has the gussets, and the other one is the one with the big rings. We will also need the large tube. I'll now discuss some of the basic tools we will need for building the first stage. Wood glue, which is used to glue paper to paper products. Scissors is used to cut the Kevlar cord. The aluminum angle we're going to need to draw lines along the outside of the big tubes. We'll need a ruler to make our measurements. I like to use a metal ruler because of the nice straight edge. A hobby knife to make most of the cuts. A pen to mark the, the tubes. And I also like to have a long stick so I can glue, put glue on the end and put it on the inside of tubes where the parts are positioned. Another useful item is a rocket motor. This is used to push the engine block inside the tube. Use the longest motor that you have available. From the die cut sheet with the big ring, we want to draw two perpendicular lines through the center of each circle. On the ring with the notch, Make sure the lines do not go through the notch. This notch would be for, a, for an engine hook cutout. The kit does not have one, but you can supply your own if you wish to do that. After you have drawn the line through both circles, go ahead and remove the rings from the sheet.
These strange looking pieces on the other die cut sheet are gussets. These are glued to the ring. So go ahead and remove these from the sheet. These will be glued to the ring like this. We'll use ordinary wood glue to attach them to the rings. After the initial glue has dried, go ahead and add a fillet along each of the roots of the gussets. After the glue has dried on the fillets, you want to take the ring without the notch. We're going to mark it two small notches on opposite sides. and we're going to cut out these notches. These notches will allow the shock cord to pass through the centering ring. Take your hobby knife and cut out the two notches. We're now going to glue the engine block into the engine mount tube. It is positioned with sufficient depth inside the tube to allow the rocket motor to hang out the back end of the tube about a half of an inch. To mark the position, take your rocket motor and lay it next to the tube and let it hang out the end by about a half of an inch. And then butt the engine block up against it. Take a wooden stick and lay it up against the tube like this. Mark the stick with a pen like that. What we're going to do is put glue on the end of the stick, put it down inside the tube and smear it around. The line on the stick tells us how far into the tube we need to make the glue line. Now take your engine block and the rocket motor and carefully and in a smooth motion push the engine block into the tube. When you get to the stopping point, about the half of an inch, quickly remove the engine. Allow this to dry, but note that this is now the back end of the engine mount tube. This is the end closest to the engine block. Now take the centering ring assembly that you have made earlier and the engine mount tube with the engine block on the back end and slide it over the tube to the top of the engine mount tube. What we're going to do is we want to let it go almost all the way to the top but just leave a little gap so we can provide a fillet around the tube and glue it in this position. push it slightly forward 
like that. Now we want to turn around and put fillets along the root edges of the gussets and another fillet along the bottom where the ring touches the tube. After you have applied the glue, go ahead and smooth it out with your finger. From the Kevlar shock cord, cut a piece that is 36 inches long. Take the ends and wrap it around the engine mount tube and tie the ends together. To make sure that this knot does not come apart, take a little bit of wood glue and rub it into the fibers of the Kevlar. Now take the Kevlar and pull it tight up against the tube with the knot against the tube like that. Now we're going to glue this Kevlar to the tube so that it cannot come loose. Just put a big fill of glue all the way around and rub it into the fibers against the tube. Now we want to glue about a one inch section of the, of the Kevlar down against the ring like that. We're going to do this on both sides of the centering ring where it comes out of the notches. and allow this to dry without disturbing it. And then after it is dry, go ahead and put more glue on top to make sure that the Kevlar does not come loose from the ring. We're now going to take the short rings and we're going to cut them in half so that we can make thrust rings that fit inside the main body tube. Take the ring and your aluminum channel and lay the ring in the channel and carefully draw a line along the ring. We're going to do this for both rings. Now we're going to cut the ring lengthwise. This is tricky. Be careful that you don't cut yourself. and do the same for the other ring. Now take the ring and slide it inside the big diameter tube. You will notice that there is overlap where the edges come together. Take your pen and draw a line using the edge of the overlap as a guide. We're now going to cut this out with a ruler and our hobby knife. Take this little piece 
of spare tube, put a little bit of glue on one edge. Just a little bit, enough to just coat a thin fit. What remains on your finger, go ahead and put on the inside of the ring. Then take the little piece, of little tab, and attach it to the inside of that ring. Allow this to dry for about five minutes. While you're allowing it to dry, you can go ahead and do the other ring the exactly the same way. After the glue on the tab is dry, we're going to join the other end together. But we're going to do this by inserting it into the tube. Our, our goal is not to glue it into the tube, but to use the tube as a guide to get an exact fit on this ring. So go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the underside of the ring. Spread it around with your finger. Now insert it into the tube. And as you insert it into the tube, spread the ends apart. Not too tight, but just snugly. And we're going to hold it there for a couple minutes while the glue has a chance to set and then to dry. Also go ahead and do the same thing with the other ring. Our next step is to take the engine mount tube and slide it into the big tube so that we can position and glue it into the tube. The aft ring is recessed into the tube two and five eighths inches. So take your ruler and just keep sliding it in until you get to two and five eighths. And just double check around the entire perimeter of the ring to make sure that it's positioned correctly. After it is in place, apply a fillet of glue around the inside of that after ring. While the glue is still wet, take one of the thrust rings you made earlier and slide it up against that centering ring. And you can go ahead and put extra glue around that fillet to make sure that it does stay in place. This is a critical joint. We don't want it failing during flight. I don't want glue on the back edge of this thrust ring because we'll be sliding the, the uh, engine nozzle assembly up against there and we need it to be exactly two and one eighth inches from the end of the tube. We're going to do the same thing on the forward end of the engine mount tube. We're going to apply a fillet along the inside edge, slide in the thrust ring, and this time we're going to put uh, a fillet on the back edge as well as the front edge. It's important that the thrust ring be right up against the ring. It's going to take all the force of the rocket motor. The two tube couplers in the kit also need to be slid in half and spliced together to fit inside the big body tube. These are a little easier to do because you can lay the channel on the inside of the tube, make your line and your cut from the inside.
while this one is drying, go ahead and do the other one the same way. make sure that it rotates around so that it's not glued into position. The first thing you're going to want to do is to replace the blade in your hobby knife. Put in the freshest, sharpest blade you have. The procedure for the wraps is basically we're going to cut it out, position it around the body tube, and trim the edges as necessary. To cut out the wraps, actually we cut them out from the back side. So go ahead and flip the wrap over. You will notice that the edges are slightly recessed and it gives you a nice sharp dividing line. What we need to do is to take our blade and just score it along that line. We don't want to cut through, we only want to score it very gently. By doing it gently, we have a better control of our blade and then what we'll do is we'll just gently rock it back and forth and that will make the plastic break into two. We want to do this along the entire perimeter of each of the wraps. Go ahead and do all five wraps using the same technique, but do not do the other wraps that are in the kit. Those will be done a different method. Now that the wraps have all been cut out, we're going to test fit them around the tube. We're not going to glue them into place yet. We just want to test fit and trim the edges as necessary. We'll start with the wrap for the thrust structure. Let's take the wrap and position it around the tube. As you pull the, the wrap tight, Notice if there's any gaps on either the front or the back edge. You can pull the wrap a little bit tighter. That will take out the gaps. And then notice how much overlap there is on the wrap. In this case, we probably have about a thirty-second of an inch, or about a millimeter. We're going to now trim that off. To trim it off, take your ruler and lay it on top of the wrap, and carefully line up the edge. And then take your knife 
and again as you're cutting it out just score lightly and as you keep doing that the edge will fall off now we're going to wrap it around the tube again to check our measurement this time the wrap looks okay The forward skirt wrap is actually a lot longer than it actually needs to be, so we're actually going to cut between a couple of the stringers. So I'm going to cut off these two stringers on this side. That's going to be a good fit right there. Of all the wraps, the seam on the inner stage will be the most visible, so use extra care to make sure that the fit is tight and the edges are straight. I recommend cutting this one last. We'll now position the vacuform wraps on the tube. First thing we'll do is we'll take our angle tool and we'll draw a pencil line down the length of the tube. For this video, I'm going to use a pen just so that you can see the line clearly. But on your kit, use a pencil. Otherwise, the ink on the pen will bleed through the paint. We'll call this line position one. We'll use this as a reference for all the other wraps. On the sheet with the Saturn booster stage, you'll find the positions for the inner tank wrap and the bottom of the first stage forward skirt wrap. We'll go ahead and mark those positions on the body tube. We're now going to tape the wraps around the tube. As you tape the ends together, make sure you can slide the wraps to make sure that you have them in the right position. The first wrap we'll position on the, is the bottom one. This is called the thrust structure wrap. slide this one along the tube so it's at the bottom of this big tube. You'll notice here is the seam line that we tape together and as we rotate the tube around to our line we're going to rotate it
so that this recessed area, which is called the hold down structure, is right in the middle of that line, like that. See, there's one stringer that's short, and it goes right on the line. And the line comes out the back at the bottom of that thrust structure, recessed area. And now we'll go ahead and tape that into position so that it can't slide back or forth. The inner tank wrap will be positioned next. As you will see, there is a raised area on this wrap and the smaller part goes in the front. And I'll join the ends together. And we'll slide it forward. Here's our line that we made earlier. That will be the back edge of the wrap. And now we're going to rotate it around so that the seam line, it doesn't go on the line that we drew earlier for position one, but it actually is a little bit to the right of that. And to orient it properly, we'll need the wooden stick and what this will do is you will lay it right in that recessed area on the thrust structure wrap and it goes forward of that and it will cover the seam line of the inner tank wrap. So just rotate that around until it is covered. You may find it helpful to draw a line from the middle of the recessed area on the inner on the thrust structure wrap and draw that forward so you can find that area where the seam line will be. And while you're at it, you might as well draw a line on the opposite side of the tube on the other recessed area right in the middle. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Actually, want to extend that line all the way past the top mark we made on the tube. That will be the bottom of the first stage aft skirt wrap. And do the same with the line on the other side. So we're moving it down, putting the seam line right along that line from the aft thrust structure. And we'll tape that into position. The first stage forward skirt wrap is positioned next. As you can see there's a recessed area here which will accept the tunnel cover which we sh is the stick. That will be towards the bottom of the tube. We'll go ahead and wrap that around, align the ends, and tape that into position into place. Then we'll slide it up along the tube to the bottom of our line, which was right there. 
and the seam will be hidden by the wood stick which goes here so we'll just bring it down into position right into the middle of the recessed area the wrap that combines the stringers for the second stage aft skirt wrap and the inner stage section is real easy to orient the aft edge which is this edge is butted up against the top end of the first stage forward skirt wrap. So we'll just go ahead and wrap it around the tube. Tape the ends together. And then the seam line actually goes along the uh, position one line that we drew earlier. You can see here's position one line and there's the seam. So it is positioned right there and it's butted up against the first stage forward skirt wrap. So then we'll just go ahead and tape that into position so that it can't move around. Now we're going to draw another line along the tube which will help us orient the topmost wrap of the rocket. This is called the second stage forward skirt. And what the line will start, here is a, uh, a rounded piece on the uh, wrap for the inner stage. And we'll start the line right in the middle of that rounded piece and we'll extend it forward. So again, we'll take our aluminum angle tool and we'll draw that line extending forward to the end of the tube. And now on the, the forward skirt wrap, the seam will go right along the line that we just drew on and it will be covered by another wooden dowel. And we'll just rotate it around to where the seam is right there and the edge of the wrap is butted up against the end of the tube. So now all the wraps are in position and we'll make sure they're all taped down so they can't rotate while we're gluing them. And in the next video I'll show you the instructions on how to glue the wraps down against the tube. We're now going to get to the part of the assembly where we're going to attach the vacuform wraps to the tube. And it's important to talk about the super glues that we're going to use. Uh, this wrap right here um, was attached using several different types of glue. Uh, one of the glues actually melted the plastic, and that's the kind of a, the glue that we want to avoid. The basic glue is just the um, the thin, the super thin variety. And when you buy glues, you want to get them in these kinds of bottles because these are the good kind of glue. The, the other super glues, which we also call CA or CYA, can have a lot of fillers in them. Um, so you want to get a good super glue and you'll always buy this from a hobby store. And it does have a shelf life um, and over time it'll start thickening up. So if you're buying the super thin variety like this one here, shake the bottle around to make sure that it is actually super thin. Now the, this regular kind, the cheap kind, the one that's the lowest price, is the kind that melts the plastic. So this is not what we want to use when we're assembling the vacuform wraps on the rocket. The, the kind that we want to use is either the odorless variety, which is this one here, let me zoom in for you, 
where it says odorless, or we want to use one that says plastic, uh, made for plastics, like this one here. Now these will work without melting the vacuform wraps, and that's what you're going to want to look for when you buy your glues. In this video, I'm going to show you how to insert a Teflon tube into the super glue bottle for the super thin CA glue. This is going to be important when we install the wraps on the rocket. So first thing we want to do is remove the top of the glue bottle, take the glue and carefully set it aside. Now take the tip and we're going to cut it off using a hobby knife. Just the very tip. If there's any glue that spills out, carefully wipe it up with a napkin. Now we're going to take our Teflon tube and we're going to cut off a piece, maybe about an inch and a half to two inches. And we're going to insert that into the hole in the tip of the CA glue bottle. And usually it doesn't fit in. So take your point of a hobby knife and kind of scrape off the inside edge of the glue bottle. And you'll keep doing that until the CA wick fits in. And now it's a little bit loose. So we're going to glue it in place. And to glue it in place, we're going to use some thick CA glue. We're just going to put a little drop on the tip where the uh, wick comes out of the bottle. And to seal it in place, we're going to put a little drop of the CA activator on there. And that will hold that in position. Go ahead and wipe that off, and now you can put it back onto your glue bottle. And you are in business, ready to apply the vacuform wraps. In this video, I'll show you how to glue the wraps down against the tube. But before I do this, I need to tell you about some mistakes to avoid. The first thing you might want to decide to do is to glue the entire wrap down to the tube all at one time. This would be a huge mistake! First, if you misalign the wrap, you won't have a chance to correct the mistake. Because the wraps are so thin, once the, the glue grabs, you'll never be able to pry it off without ruining the wrap. And second, we'll be trimming away sections of the wrap later and you don't want to glue these down otherwise you won't be able to peel them up. So we only want the edges of the wraps sealed down against the tube. The other mistake that can ruin the wraps is by using the wrong adhesive or by using too much of it. For this step we're going to only be using the super thin CA glue and you must use the applicator wick. This will allow you to put the glue only along the edge of the wrap and it will control the amount that you apply to the tube. If you use too much, the glue will melt the plastic and cause it to crack. This will definitely ruin the wrap. So use as little glue as possible. Let me stress this again. Use only a little bit of glue. We only want the edges sealed down. We're going to begin the process by doing the aft thrust structure wrap. As you notice you have the seam here where the edges come together and what we want to do is we want to start on the opposite side of the tube. What we're going to do is glue it down and work towards the seam so that as we glue down we're constantly stretching the plastic keeping the edges sealed tight against the tube. 
the first thing I want you to do is you have the the hold down structure which is this area right here I want to put a drop of CA glue right at the very end and press that hard against the tube if there's any CA glue on the surface of the wrap just wipe it off with a paper towel real quick and now I want to hold this down as tight against the tube as I can and just let the CA wick underneath the plastic any any CA on the surface just go ahead and wipe that off and now we're going to do the front edge the same way again we want to hold it tight just put a line of CA there let it wick under by itself and wipe off any excess as we go around the tube we're going to do the bottom edge here first but we're going to ignore the fin fairing location so we're going to do that bottom then we'll do the next bottom again we'll start in the middle tack it down first hold it tight against the tube and run a little CA along the edge now we'll do the front and this time we'll start where we glued before and keep working around Now we are to the seam, so we'll go ahead and remove the tape. And we're going to do that edge as before. Just hold it down and let the glue grab. and then we'll work towards this side And now we'll do along the seam. And just hold it there until the glue has a chance to catch. Okay, now we're ready to do the fairing locations, and again, we'll start in the middle and work outward towards the edges. And again, just let the CA wick underneath. And continue to do this for all the edges. All the other wraps are done with the same method, but on the interstage wrap, my word of advice is to do the front edge first 
and then the rear edge, and then the portions that stick up. I would do all the horizontal por portions first, and then finally the vertical portions. This seemed to work a little better for me. After you're done, if there's any residue from the tape left on the wraps, take some rubber cement thinner and a rag and it will easily come off without ruining the plastic. On this video, you'll see an alternative method of attaching the vacuform wraps to your rocket. The method that I'll show you on this video will show you how to use double-sided tape to affix the wraps to the rocket. I recommend the Scotch brand of tape by the 3M Corporation. They have a special artist tape used for mounting photographs and goes by the number 463. Because the wraps are sized to exactly fit around the circumference of the tube, the added thickness of the tape will make them a little bit short on the seams. But there is something you can do to make the edges meet better. That is to prepare the wrap by sanding the back side of them. After cutting the wraps from the waste plastic, the edges may still have a little ridge on the very edge. Using your aluminum sanding bar, and some 400 grit paper, we're going to sand the edges of the wraps. Cup the wrap in your hand and then carefully push the sandpaper away from your fingers. You can also lightly sand the middle of the wrap to smooth it down a little bit. And this will also give a little extra room for the tape. After sanding, Wash the wrap in some water to remove all the dust that's on the back side of the wrap. The Scotch brand of double sticky tape is easy to apply, but you'll need to cover the entire surface of the wrap with the tape. When you put the tape down, lay it down from one edge, then the next piece, and then the next piece. That way the edges of the tape won't be covering each other. So what we want to do is we want to expose about an eighth inch of the tape. As you can see, peeling up the plastic backing is pretty easy. And you might, you might want to cut this off too with a hobby knife. So now I have a little bit of the adhesive exposed and we're going to use our line on the tube as the guide and we're going to carefully line it up and just kind of tack it down gently. We want to make sure that we have this wrap straight so that when we run it around the perimeter of the tube the edges will align. And as you can see, there's a gap right here right now. But once we remove the tape, the backing material on the tape, this gap will close up. And then we're going to expose all the adhesive on the tape. And then we're going to roll it around the tube. and then press it down hard with your fingers to make sure that we get a good contact with the tube and with the plastic wrap. 
like I said, this method might leave a little bit of a gap because of the thickness of the tape. But you'll be able to hide most of these gaps with the tunnels or with a little bit of putty. There should be four gussets left from the die cut ring sheet. These are going to be glued onto the centering ring with the holes in it. What this does is this goes inside of the nozzle assembly and stiffens it up so that it's sturdy enough to hold the weight of the rocket. What we'll do is we'll draw two perpendicular lines through the center of the ring. It doesn't have to be exact because nobody's going to see this part anyway. And just take a little bit of glue and what I want you to do is I want you to avoid about the quarter inch on the square edge. And just glue that to the ring like that. And do the same on the other side. Again, avoid the front edge the reason we're avoiding that front edge is we don't want to clog this hole in the middle of the ring with any glue and then continue with the other gussets until you're done. And then after it is dry, go ahead and put fillets along the edges of the gussets. Take the tube coupler that you spliced before and the rings with the holes in it. And what we're going to do, we're going to glue this on top of the tube coupler. And as we glue it on, it's important to note that the ring should fit right in the middle so that there's no overlap on the sides. So go ahead, put a little bit of glue on the top of the tube coupler. and then carefully center the ring on top. Any glue that oozes out should be immediately wiped off. And then after it is dried, go ahead and put a fillet of glue on the inside of the coupler. If you get any glue in the holes, be sure to clean them out with a paper towel before the glue has a chance to harden. There are three big die cut rings included in the kit. They look to be the same size, but actually this one has a bigger diameter middle. You can tell this by taking the third stage tube and putting it in the center. If there's room around the outside, this is the ring we want for the next step. Go ahead and remove the ring from the sheet and we're going to glue it on top of the tube coupler.
Again, we want it centered perfectly or as close as possible. And any glue that oozes out, immediately wipe off. And then afterwards, we're going to put a fillet of glue on the inside edge. Uh, and this will have to do with our finger because it's a little difficult to reach with the glue bottle. Just go ahead and work slowly and continue to apply the glue on the inside of the ring. After the glue has dried on all the fillets on the inside, we'll now go ahead and sand the outside edges to make sure that none of the ring sticks over the edge of the coupler. This will make it hard to fit into the big diameter tube. So go ahead and take some medium grit sandpaper and sand off those edges. And as you sand, work towards the tube and not away from it. If you work away from it, you'll delaminate the layers of paper on the centering rings. When you're done sanding, take some thin CA and wick it into the edges of the ring. This will prevent the paper from delaminating in the future. Finally, after the CA has dried, go ahead and sand the edges smooth with some fine sandpaper. We'll now assemble the nozzles. Go ahead and remove them from the sprue. And as you turn them over, you will notice one side has little pins and the other side has little holes. And these will be glued together using plastic model cement. Go ahead and line them up and then using a paintbrush, put model cement along the seams and it will wick in and bond the edges together. And then when you're working on the outside, be very careful not to use too much of the plastic model cement. And go ahead and do all the plastic nozzles at this time. We'll now take the plastic nozzle mounts and we'll glue them into the base of the nozzle assembly using CA glue. For this we'll use the thick variety. Just take care not to get any glue on the inside of the holes. After the glue has a chance to dry, go ahead and paint this section. The, the base of the rocket will be white. And at the same time, you can also paint the nozzles. The nozzles will be silver. On the inside of the nozzle, there are some raised areas that can be removed with a hobby knife and some sandpaper.
are now ready for painting. Prior to painting the nozzles, we want to mask off the posts on the top of the nozzles. Just take a little piece of tape and wrap it around the outside so that no paint gets on this nozzle post. And we also want to cover the holes in the top of these plates. So go ahead and take a piece of tape, press it down hard, then take your hobby knife and carefully cut around the perimeter. I'll first start painting these with some gray primer. When spraying the base of the rocket, I want to avoid the sides as much as possible. This will build up paint along the outside, making it hard to put the base into the bottom of the rocket. I'm putting on the white paint. We're going to do it in several light coats to make sure that we avoid getting any runs in the paint. When painting the silver, I'm going to take a body tube like a BT5. I'll put a small slit in it and shove it up into the nozzle. This will give me a handle to hold and rotate the nozzle while I paint it. So now we'll go ahead and paint the nozzle. After the paint has dried, we'll go ahead and remove the masking tape and we're going to use plastic model cement to glue the posts into the holes. As you glue these in, it's important to note which holes the posts go into. In the middle set, the post goes in the middle hole. On all the outside motors, the nozzle post goes towards the outside hole, like that. And to glue these in, we can either do it from the inside, or we can put glue on the post holes and then set them in place. We're now going to install the tunnel covers that go along the side of the booster section. Take one of the half round dowels and position it so that it just covers the edge of these two ribs here. And then hold it in position and slide the rocket forward. And on the front side we're going to mark the dowel just at the, the middle of these two little ribs right here. So we're going to take the pencil 
and mark that there. And go ahead and do the same thing for the other half round wood dowel for the other side of the rocket. Now we're going to take a razor saw and we're going to cut off that portion of the dowel that sticks over the line. Take your ruler and we're going to mark 5 sixteenths onto the dowel right here. And take that line and draw it all the way around the dowel. Don't press too hard because we don't, don't want to uh, mar the wood. And we'll also draw it on the back side of the dowel. And do this for both ends of the dowel. I'll use a pen so that you can see, but use a pencil on this. And we're now going to shape the dowels. Actually, they're going to be rounded like this. And then they're also going to be arced over the front. And we're going to carve these using sandpaper. Uh, I'm going to use a medium grit sandpaper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it along the edge and I'm going to sand towards the tip. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And we're going to do this for, for both dowels, both front and back side. Now that the tip is rounded, we're now going to bevel the edge downward. Again, we're going to use some sandpaper, and this time we're going to work on the tip. We're going to sand forward. And it helps to support the bottom. See, we're flattening out the tip. And we want to stop when we get to the line right here. But we want it all the way down to a point. And then we're going to round over the edges. Now I'm going to switch to some finer sandpaper to smooth it out and to remove any of the other sharp or hard edges. There's some fine sandpaper. And we're going to do this for both of the dowels, front and back, on the booster section. After you have sanded the end of the tunnel, go ahead and sand the overall surface of the tunnel 
with some fine grit sandpaper. After it has been completely sanded, you may find that sealing it now with wood filler will be easier than sealing it after it has been attached to the tube. I just use carpenter's wood filler thinned out and then applied with a paintbrush. After this dries, then we can go ahead and sand it again and just keep applying it until you get the desired surface finish you want. You can see how dusty the filler is. That's great because it doesn't clog up the sandpaper. You may lay a towel down on your table to protect the vacuform wraps when you're working in this area up here. There's one more dowel that is glued to the rocket. It's at the forward part of the rocket and it extends forward from the raised area of the vacuform wrap. The length of this dowel is 8 and 5 inches. So we're going to measure, mark, and cut at this location. As before, we're going to cut the dowel with a razor saw. And the forward edge is shaped just like the other dowels on the rocket. So measure 5 sixteenths. Mark the dowel. and then it will be sanded around the tip and then slant it and round to the edges. The back side is left straight and you'll want to square that up and sand that end of the dowel. Just make sure it's straight. As you can see, I also went ahead and painted the tunnel covers with some gray primer and then sanded them smooth. This will help to spot any defects that you have in the balsa wood tunnel covers. After your wood dowels have been sanded smooth, we'll now apply them to the side of the rocket. Position the dowel right into the middle of the flat area and extend it forward so that it's in the middle of the area up here. We're going to remove the middle that's in the interstage section. What we'll do is we'll just draw a line along the interstage or the inner tank. And we want to use a pencil on this. I'm just using a pen for clarity. Now we're going to take our aluminum angle, position it there, and we're going to cut with an, a sharp exacto knife. Since the edges are glued down, we have to come in from the side with the knife blade and carefully scrape underneath to pry it up. Now you have the option of doing the same thing on the forward 
and the aft sections. Um, these don't stick as high, so they act, it actually can be glued down pretty easily. To glue this in place, I'm going to use thick CA glue. I'll just run a little bead along the tunnel. You don't want to use too much, just a nice thin bead. Now we'll position it. and press it down hard against the tube. If you accidentally pry up any of the wrap on the inner tack, go ahead and use the thin CA glue. And just tack it down and wipe off any that's on the surface. On the inner tank wrap, I also want to take some thin CA glue and just let it wick along the edge of the tunnel, and that will seal the tunnel against the vacuform wrap. We'll do it on both sides. Just want to use just a little bit, wipe off any of that get on the surface. And we're going to do the same thing for the tunnel on the other side and then the tunnel that's on the forward part of the tank. We're going to glue the forward tunnel down the same way and again this is optional whether or not you want to cut around the tunnel marking it and cutting it. I'm going to go ahead and do it on this particular model. This one's a little harder to cut because you have to follow the curvature of the forward end. It took some effort, but I was able to pry it up, and now I'll glue it down using thick CA glue. And also on this time, I want to put a little drop of glue on the end where it touches up against the curved section on the vacuform wrap. We don't need much CA, just a, a line along the bottom. line it up and then hold it down until the glue has a chance to set. And you may want to also run a bead of glue of the thin variety right at the very tip. And wipe off any excess on the surface. If you intend to fly your Saturn V, we also need to draw a line on the rocket tube to locate our launch lugs. The position one line would actually be okay, except for that is a dividing line between the colors on the rocket. On one side it will be black, on the other side it would be white. So masking around the launch lug would be difficult. So what we want to do is move it off to the side approximately the same distance as the tunnel except on the other side. So we'll draw a line right about there. Again we'll use our aluminum angle. And just extend the line up the tube. One launch lug will be positioned down here.
and the other one is going to be positioned right behind the first stage forward skirt wrap. Right along that line. In the kit you'll find a 3 inch long piece of wood and a 3 inch long launch lug. We're going to cut both of these in half. First find the middle and go ahead and mark it with a pencil. And cut the wood use the razor saw and for the launch lug we're going to use a single edge razor blade take the razor blade carefully find the middle and use a sawing action carefully cut it in half. And now we're going to clean up the edges with some sandpaper. Do the same for the wood and both launch lugs. And now we're going to glue each launch lug to the top of the wood, just using regular wood glue. Just make sure the two align them straight. We'll now go ahead and glue the launch lugs onto the rocket. The first one goes on the launch lug line right at the back end of the rocket. And the second one will be positioned right behind the first stage forward wrap, forward skirt wrap. And if you have a metal launch rod, I would go ahead and slide it through the launch lugs to make sure that they're both parallel and that it slides through easily. In this step we'll be assembling the balsa wood fairing braces. These fit inside the vacuform fairings to give support to the fairings so they're not easily damaged on landing. From the die cut sheet go ahead and remove all the pieces We're going to start by taking two of the slanted pieces, gluing another slanted piece on top, and finally this piece right here. This gap inside allows the fin to slide in there and we'll have a through the wall fin. So go ahead and glue these together using wood glue. Try not to let any glue ooze out into the slot. This could prevent the fin from being inserted. Go ahead and make sure all the sides are aligned. And then we're going to set it aside to dry with the key.
keep the parts together, I'm going to use some of these paper clips and just hold it there while the glue has a chance to set and to dry. And while that's drying, I'll go ahead and assemble the other three because we need a set of four for the rocket. Now we'll go ahead and glue the back edge onto this part here. And it should fit right into that slot on the back. And what we're going to do is also put a fillet down the sides to hold everything real nice and tight. When the fairing braces are dry, we're going to glue them into position on the thrust structure wrap. The aft edge will go up against the end of the tube and the forward beam is centered right between the vacuform wrap. And you're going to probably be tempted to deform the tube to make sure that these fit and conform to the tube. But I don't want you to do that. In fact, I want you to take the display nozzle section and slide it into the tube. And this will prevent the tube from being deformed. And now we can glue these on, and we're going to use thick CA glue. Just run a bead of glue on the bottom side. Uh, uh, avoid the gap, but you can put it on the edges. And then along the bottom. If there's any gaps as you put it down against the tube, don't worry about that now. We'll come back and fill those gaps later. Just make sure it is centered in the tube and you can use the, the thick CA to fill any gaps but don't don't deform the edge of the tube at all after all the braces are installed you can go ahead and remove the display nozzles Right now we're going to cut out the fairing of the Saturn V. Uh, all the vacuum forms that we're going to be doing, this is the only one we're going to cut out with a scissors. Uh, when you cut it out, don't use a straight scissors, but use a scissors with a curved cutting end, like a cuticle scissors. This will allow you to get into the tight corners a lot easier. As you can see, this is the final fairing as it will be made. The first step to do is to make a rough cut around the entire perimeter and then cut in the middle. We don't want to cut along the edge just yet. We just want to cut away most of the excess plastic. Now that most of the plastic is cut away, now we're going to go in and cut carefully along the edge. This time we want to work slowly and cut neatly along that edge. And on the very tip of the fairing, you can see it steps down a little bit. Now I'm going to come in from the side make that little cut. And then we'll do the same thing on the back edge of the fairing. This is where it really helps to have the curved tip on the scissors. Going around this curve is quite tricky. And the edge, if you look carefully at the edge, we don't want it to flare out any 
So if it does flare out, I'm just going to carefully cut that, trim that off. From the large pattern sheet, cut out the pattern for cutting the slots in the vacuform fairing sheets. The only straight lines on this are for the slot itself. All these other lines are curved. I would recommend with starting with the slot itself and try to cut on the outside of the black lines. And for all the curved lines, just use your hobby knife. Now take the vacuform fairing, turn it upside down, and lay the pattern sheet inside. Take the back edge and butt it up against the inside lip of the fairing. Look through the cutout for the middlemost ridge inside the fairing and at the top line up this line with the center rib up here. And carefully take your pencil and draw inside the cutout. And we want to do this for all the fairings. Next we want to cut out this slot in the fairing. So carefully take your ruler, lay it inside. Try not to spread this open too much or you'll or you'll slice open the fairing that back edge. Take your X-Acto knife and run it inside there. And again, do this for all the fairing shells. The vacuform fin fairings will sit on top of the braces with the slot in the fairing fitting over the top of the slot in the fin fairing brace. We're not going to use super glue to glue these down. We're going to use the fix it epoxy, and the reason will become obvious as we put them on. So, take an equal glob of both the A and the B part and thoroughly mix them together. Then, go ahead and mix it together. If you find your fingers sticking to the epoxy, take a little rubbing alcohol. Pour it in a little cup and then just dip your fingers into it occasionally and that will prevent the epoxy from sticking to your fingers and allow you to mix it together thoroughly. What we're going to first do is take a little bit of the epoxy. We're going to make a little snake out of it and we're going to stick it on the forward part of the fairing brace. Later when we put the fairing down we'll smush it down against the epoxy and that will create a nice rigid beam right along the top. And we're also going to put a little bit on the back edge. 
it doesn't take a much epoxy so I'll try to use it sparingly you don't want to add too much weight to the rocket and also make sure that no epoxy gets into the slot so every now and then just double check and make sure that that slot is kept open and even when we put the fin fairing on just make sure that you can still slide a fin into that slot now we're going to take more of the fix it epoxy and we want to create a long thin snake and we're going to run it along the inside edge of the fairing get it as close to the edge as possible and try to keep it thin just draw it and stretch it with your fingers to make sure it make it as thin as possible we don't need much just enough to adhere it to the rocket as you can see I have my bead of fixed epoxy all around the perimeter of the fairing including on the inside back edge now we're going to take this and position it on top of the fairing brace and on the back edge make sure the lip hangs over the back of the balsa structure before you press it down make sure that the slot is right in the middle and then push it down hard and also push the sides down hard uh, against the inside edge of the thrust structure wrap and if the epoxy oozes out that's okay uh, we still have plenty of time to come back wipe off any on the surface and also to smooth out along the edges and then after it is dry we'll come back and we'll actually stick epoxy, epoxy underneath this front edge and we'll fill in any gaps along the side and smooth it out so overall this is a great technique for putting the fairings down because it allows you to reposition it as necessary because you have a three hour working time and you can smooth it out and also it is very strong so after you get it this one position go ahead and do the other three the exactly the same way at this point I've got all the fairings on and the epoxy clay has already hardened now I'm going to go back mix up another batch of epoxy clay and I'm gonna fill in all the little gaps along the edges of the fairings and so that the fairing blends really nice into the body tube of the rocket One of the things that I've found works nice is dipping your finger in alcohol and running it along the stringers and pushing the epoxy clay up into the gaps that you might have. When you have the clay into the groove, then take a paper towel and also dip it into the alcohol and run it into those slots using the same technique this not only cleans out the slots but it actually smooths out the epoxy clay and when you're done make sure you remove any of the excess epoxy clay that might be on top of the fairings or the thrust structure wrap After all the epoxy is hardened, we're going to take our X-Acto knife and we're going to cut out this piece of body tube here at the bottom. And 
and go ahead and do the same for the other areas. To make sure that the display nozzle assembly slides in and out of the tube easily, we're going to sand the inside edges to remove all the burrs that were created when we cut out the notches. So go ahead and use some heavy sandpaper and just sand them until the burrs are all gone and the display nozzle slides easily in and out. After you're done sanding with the rough grit sandpaper, we're going to seal all the edges with some thin CA glue. And once this is cured, we'll go ahead and sand it down again and then finally smooth it out with some fine grit sandpaper. Finally you can slide the engine assembly in and the nozzles are oriented so that they are centered right in the middle of the fairings and then just slide it all the way in. From the die cut centering ring sheet, take the large ring with the holes punched into it we're going to glue it on one end of the big diameter third stage tube and we're going to use wood glue for this. While the glue is drying on this centering ring, we'll go ahead and take the other centering ring on the sheet and we're going to glue it to the top of the tube coupler that we had spliced together earlier. Again, let's just use wood glue. And when we center it on the tube, we need to make sure that the ring is centered concentrically on the tube and it doesn't stick over the edges. So let's go ahead put glue on the ring. After the glue is dry on the outside, we'll go ahead and put a fillet on the inside of the ring. From the Kevlar shock cord, cut a piece that is 25 inches long and take some glue and rub it into the ends and try to create a point with the Kevlar. The reason is we're going to feed the Kevlar into the holes on the base of the centering ring and it's easier to push through the holes if the Kevlar has a point on it. Take the Kevlar shock cord and pass it through one of the holes on the base of the centering ring. Pull it through and then feed it back into the hole. Now wrap it around the tube and there's two other holes on the other side and we're going to do the same thing. Go out through the back side and come in through the front side. Now we're going to take the ends and we want to tie them together. We want to keep the knot as close to the ends as possible. And to keep this knot from coming apart, rub a little bit of glue into it.
Now, on the front side, pull the two ends so you have about an equal amount of shock cord coming through. And then push this, push this shock cord down against the base of the tube and then glue it down against the centering ring. After the glue is dry on both of the rings, we'll go ahead and glue this tube coupler onto this ring. Any glue that oozes out, go ahead and wipe off right now. And go ahead and center up the coupler onto the ring as best as possible. We don't want any edge of the coupler hanging over the edge of the ring, as this will make it hard to stick into the body tube. You can also put a fillet of glue on the inside edge of the ring where it meets the body tube. When the glue on the centering rings is dry, what we're going to do next is to sand off any of the ring that hangs over the edge of the coupler. And as we sand, we'll always use a sanding block and some rough sandpaper. And we're going to sand towards the tube. We're never going to sand away from it. What that would do is to delaminate the fibers of the centering ring. And do the same thing for the top edge. Again, work towards the coupler. After you're done sanding, we're going to seal the edges of the centering ring with some thin CA glue, and we'll use an applicator tip to position it properly on that edge of that ring. Any glue that's on the edges, just wipe off with a paper towel and do the front and the back the same way. When the CA glue is dry, go ahead and sand the edges with some fine sandpaper just so it slides easily into the big tube. We're now going to begin the assembly of the transition section between the tube coupler and the third stage tube. There's actually two parts to this transition, an internal transition made out of paper and the external corrugated section which you see here. The paper transition is printed on this wrap here. Before you cut it out, let me explain a slight modification we're going to make to this wrap. There was a slight misprint in this wrap here where this line was printed too close to the curves. What we want to do is take our ruler and we want to draw a line parallel to this about 1 16th of an inch. When we cut this out we're going to cut along this line here so using your exacto knife, go ahead and start cutting out this paper transition.
on the straight edges, always use a ruler to guide your knife. After the internal transition has been cut from the pattern sheet, go ahead and gently pre-curl the paper by rolling it. Try not to crease it, just roll it, just roll it both directions. And at the same time also curl the overlap piece. You might find it easier to kind of roll it around the edge of your hobby knife so it has a nice gentle curve to it. What we're going to do is to attach this right in the middle of the transition and we're going to use rubber cement. When we do transitions we always use rubber cement. What we'll do is we'll first apply a thin layer on both edges. We're also going to get this edge here. And just allow this to dry for a couple minutes until there's no more solvents in the rubber cement and what it will look like it will lose its gloss and it will have a dull surface finish. When the rubber cement is dry we'll take the overlap piece we'll flip it over and position it right in the middle of the transition and just gently press it down. And we'll take the other edge and what we'll do is we'll gently come in at an angle like this. We'll put the edges together and allow it to flex upward. And as it does, press down with your thumbs on the inside to press it into place. And then you can take your finger and rub it back and forth to remove any of the residue of the rubber cement that's on the outside. Before we can put the internal transition onto the body tube, we need to bevel this edge so that when we slide it over, it will seat nicely along the edge of the coupler. Again, we'll use our sandpaper, our heavy duty sandpaper, and we'll work towards the coupler again. This time, we're, you can just see, this time, as you can see, we're doing it at a pretty steep angle. Now we can slide the transition section onto the tube and it should seat nicely on that transition and you may have to rotate it around a little bit to get it to seat. If you notice any warping along the top or if it doesn't seat along the bottom, what you can do is peel apart the rubber cement area, spread it open a little bit then reseal it down with a fresh coat of rubber cement and slide it down to the coupler. Also inspect the upper edge to make sure that there is no gaps. If there is a gap that means your spacing is too wide so again peel off the transition, peel off the overlap piece underneath and then trim that edge just slightly with your ruler and a hobby knife and then put it back together the same way as when we started. Again, we're, we're looking for no gaps along the top or the bottom and no puckering this way. That would be too tight and if there's any gaps then it's too loose. We want a nice perfect fit on this piece. After the fit of the transition has been adjusted we're now going to glue it in place with thin CA glue 
and we'll just go along the edges and let it wick underneath the paper. Any CA on the tube, wipe off with a paper towel. And do this for the front and the back. The next thing we're going to do is to stiffen this up by impregnating the entire surface of the paper with thin CA glue. You may want to do this step outdoors as the fumes of the glue can be irritating. Also, remember to always wear safety glasses when using CA glue. Just apply it, rub it around with the, the applicator wick, and any of the CA that doesn't wick into the paper wipe off immediately and then keep doing this for the entire surface of the transition. After the CA glue has cured we're going to go ahead and sand this down with some fine sandpaper just to remove any of the bumps of CA glue that might have stuck up on the surface. Don't sand down this edge to make this flat. Allow it to hang over the edge.